The following program contains immature and adult subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. Just for Laughs presents... The American Founding Fathers built their nation on strong principles, bravery, and sacrifice. Now it's up to the next generation to assume the responsibility. Unless something else came up. And they wanted to take delivery now, and promise to pay for it later. <clears throat> this is The Decline of the American Empire, hosted by John Oliver. It's your patriotic duty to watch. Good evening. Yes, 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 Canada. Yes, Montreal. Yes, we. Yes. Good evening, Montreal. Welcome to the decline of the American Empire. Oh, OK. Something I gather from that reaction you've been waiting quite a long time for. <laughs> for America, let's admit it, the numbers don't look good. Over 9% unemployment, $14.3 trillion in debt. But you know what? Those are just facts. And at its best, America has never been about facts. It's been about belief. It's about looking at a fact and saying, no. <laughs> no, no. I don't think so. Let's try something a little better than that. <laughs> My favorite moments in life are the halftime speeches during American sports movies where a team is about to get completely massacred by the opposition, in walks the coach, music swelling behind him, and he delivers a speech which lifts their hearts and gets them to achieve the impossible. You've seen these speeches. Al Pacino in Any Given Sunday. Denzel Washington in That Other One. <laughs> what America needs is at the next State of the Union, a president to walk into Congress with a sports drink in his hand, throw it against the wall and say, what was that? <laughs> what just happened out there? Are you kidding me? Michigan, you call that productivity? Listen, if you want to just coast through life, go and live in Canada. At least you'll get free health care for doing nothing. <laughs> hey, Wisconsin! Stop phoning it in during the fourth financial quarter. You're LeBroning it out there. Stop LeBroning it. And Utah, what do you even do? You don't think the Dominican Republic won your place on the flag? Earn that star! All right, everyone, take a knee, take a knee. Now, I know it looks bad out there, and there are people watching us that think we're done. I don't know. Maybe they're right. Maybe we just hand the number one spot to China. Maybe we do that. Or maybe we make them take it from us. Take it from us with their tiny hands. Because this planet is our house. It's our house. So let's get out there and show everyone why we stole this land from the Native Americans. Let's do this. Is it over for America? I don't know. What's the evidence? I can tell you one story that I think is illustrative of something. I was in Boise, Idaho recently for the first and, God willing, final time. <laughs> and I saw something I will never forget. At the center of Boise, right on Main Street, there is this huge gray building. And on the front of the building is just one word written in golden letters. And that word is library and then there's an exclamation mark <laughs> and I stood in front of that building for what felt like hours trying to figure out what that exclamation mark was really trying to say was it I oh, know I can't believe Boise's got a library either <laughs> but I think we have to learn to live with it now they might be right. America doesn't need libraries. America doesn't need books. There are plenty of books in the world and plenty of people who've read them. 
They should stick to what they're truly great at, TV. Have you got any idea just how good the TV show Wipeout is? <laughs> Wipeout is so good, America has finished television. When you watch Wipeout, you get that calm sensation wash over you as, the, as if you're watching a country doing exactly what it should be doing at this moment in its history. Because watching Wipeout is like watching the last days of ancient Rome. <laughs> oh, it's spectacular and it looks like fun, but deep down I think everyone knows it can't last forever. <laughs> and most countries would have stopped there, having finished something. But I guess there's that special quality in Americans, that pioneering spirit which throughout years has pushed them that extra mile to achieve the incredible. So instead of stopping with Wipeout, instead of doing that, they created a program called Downfall. Downfall was a game show. The difference, though, was that in Downfall, if anyone failed to win a particular prize, that prize was pushed from the roof of a 10-story building. Prizes like grand pianos, jet skis. It was taken off the air by ABC in America after just six weeks, presumably because it was simply too good. <laughs> but think about what we lost that day. Because that was the biggest imaginable message to terrorists we could possibly issue. <laughs> when you push a jet ski, a jet ski! From a 10-storey building, what you're essentially saying to them is, there is nothing you can do to us that we are not already doing to ourselves. <laughs> Pass me another jet ski. These people don't frighten me. I frighten me. <laughs> Americans are heroes. All of them. And I'll tell you why Americans are heroes. They don't waste time overthinking things. <laughs> Do you honestly think any other country could have put a man on the moon? Of course not. That is a stupid thing to do. <laughs> only America could pull that off. Because only America would send his friend up a few years later with a set of golf clubs so they could whack a few balls around up there. It makes complete sense if you don't really think about it. <laughs> Most Guinness World Records are held by Americans. There's a very good reason for this, and that is that most Guinness World Records are ridiculous, <laughs> and they are good at that. <laughs> Only three human beings, for instance, have ever jogged across the Sahara Desert. Where were they from? Do you really need me to tell you that? <laughs> Or in your hearts, do you not already know? Three Americans jogging across one of the least hospitable places on Earth. iPods dangling out of their ears, hurdling over refugees. And who did it? USA, baby, that's who. Woo! There's another one. They're everywhere. I wanted to see if this theory stood up. So I bought a Guinness Book of Records which I in no way knew they still made. <laughs> and I pulled out three records at random to see who had dominated each field. Record number one was this. Most live rattlesnakes held in the mouth. Ooh. Huh. Ten is the answer <laughs> to that unexpected question. <laughs> who did that? Jack Bibby. When? 2006. What country is he from? I'll give you a clue. <laughs> it's got two syllables and it starts with M. That's right, Merka. <laughs> Merka did it. <laughs> Record number two, oldest male stripper. Oh. <laughs> Cherish the final few moments you have of not knowing the answer to this. <laughs> He's 76. His name, Bernie Barker. Where's he from? This will not surprise you. Miami, Florida. 
That is supply and demand. That is capitalism at its best and worst. Record number three, the Super Bowl. <laughs> Largest gathering of people dressed as gorillas. <laughs> Let me just give you the number first, because it's instantly overwhelming. 637. <laughs> Think about that for a second. At that point, you are either importing gorilla costumes or making them on site, because no one world city has 637 gorilla costumes on the off chance that people will mobilise and require them at exactly the same time. <laughs> Think about the logistics involved. When did this happen? 1999. Where did it happen? London, England. We did that! Dresses up as gorillas better than us. Nobody! Nobody! Please, Canada, do not break that record. It is literally all my people has left. <laughs> More about the decline of the American Empire next. Decline of the American Empire is back, eh? Here is something you're all going to be seeing a lot more of. An American who's been forced to come to Canada to find work. Please welcome Alonzo Bowden! Yes, what's up, Canada? How you guys doing? You all right? You good? We're a mess, I'll admit it. My country, we, we got problems, we're a mess, but it's a fight. You got Republicans and Democrats. The one thing the Republicans can all agree on, that it's all the Democrats' fault. <laughs> I was watching a Republican presidential debate. It was unbelievable. Then I got to thinking, oh yeah, I remember back in 2008 when everything was perfect. And the amazing thing is the Democrats go along with it. They accept the blame. Every time the Republicans attack, the Democrats give up. Can anyone surrender in a fight quicker than a Democrat? Even France looks at the Democrats like, man up, what the hell? It's Barack Obama is a beaten man. Sometimes he looks like an abused wife. Every time he tries to fight the Republicans, they slap his ass and he's like, it'll be different next time. No, it won't. <laughs> They're gonna get drunk and slap your ass again. <laughs> and then the Republicans took over Congress. All right, and, and I gotta give credit where credit is due. When the Republicans took over Congress, they went from powerful to Jedi. <laughs> the Republicans are capable of Jedi mind tricks. For two years, Barack Obama was running around, I will not raise taxes on the middle class, I will raise taxes on the rich, the rich can afford it, they will pay, blah, blah, blah. Republicans were like, come here, young Obama. <laughs> you will not raise taxes on the rich. He's like, I will not raise taxes on the rich. These are not the tax increases you are looking for. <laughs> oh. It is unbelievable that they questioned the president on being American. It's like the plot of a bad James Bond movie. You know, like they were in Africa and they found this smart kid and they sent him to secret Muslim terrorist school, you know. Then they snuck him into the United States through Hawaii, because hell, nobody's checking over there. <laughs> but if I were hiding Muslims in the White House, would I really name them Barack Hussein Obama? <laughs> like, if I'm hiding Muslims, I'm not naming them Hussein. Be like, hey, I'd like you to meet my new friend, uh, uh, Leroy Jones. <laughs> it is unreal. Oh, we can't let the gays get married. Gay marriage is equal. And, and the Democrats fight for the gays. Oh, well, uh, uh, how about civil unions? Uh, how about if they just hang out together? No. Gay marriage? That's an issue right now? You're talking to me about gay marriage? My house is worth 